I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when we don't see it, you're working Even when we don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when we don't see it, you're working Even when we don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, help us even when Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop, you never stop working You, you, you never stop, you never stop working
When our back was against the wall And it looked as if it was over Oh, you made a way This is for someone tonight And we're standing here Only because you made When our backs was against the wall And it looked as if it was over Oh, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you You made a way You, you made a way When our backs were When our backs were against the wall Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. 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 Look at God, you perform miracles. There is nothing, nothing that's impossible. We are standing here only because you made you move mountains, God. Your God's walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. Nothing, nothing that's impossible. Now I'm standing here only because you made you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. We're standing here only because you made we alive today only because you made we can sing to you God only because you made we are standing healthy now only because you made we have roof over our heads only because you made we have food to eat god only because you made we have clothes to wear only because you made we are standing with our legs now only because you made we can use our hands only because you made Right now, only because you made a way, only because you made a way, only because you made a way, always make a way, only because you made a way, only because. We have a right senses only because you made. We have a place to gather only because you made. Oh, oh, only because you made. No one else, no one else but you. Only because you made. Away. Only because, only because you made a way. 
Aren't you glad he made a way? Not everyone can make a way. The Bible says the way of man is not in himself. So you can't make your own way. You need him to make a way. You need him to get the stuff out the way. All the clutter. All the things that you didn't know were blocking you. There's a lot of clutter that comes in our lives and we don't know. We don't notice it. But when he comes in, he reveals and he shows and he says, look, this don't belong. And he makes a way for you. But him making a way for you is not it. Just because he made a way for you doesn't mean you don't have to walk in that way. You have to walk in that way. You have to start talking in that way. You have to start moving that way. He doesn't make a way just for you to sit there. God doesn't make a way so you can sit down and eat Cheetos. You have to do something with it. You have to do something with the way he's made. I'd like to invite you tonight to open your ears and your hearts and your minds. We're going to dig in a little bit and uh, it should be interesting. <laughs> so you may have your seats if you're not already sitting. If you want to rest, that's cool. It's all right. Thank God for the praise team. That was mediocre. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Listen, I was on the praise team for about 15 years. And it's not something you just do. <laughs> it's not like divine and God's son and Derek are just waking up and just... Yeah, let me play keys. Let me. No, it's it's not. It's not like it's not. There's effort put into this thing, and so there's. It's a lifestyle. It's like, you know, it's it's not a joke to people, and because we know it can save people. I remember a testimony where someone was having a praise and worship rehearsal, and a guy was on his way to commit suicide. This was in our family. This was in our church family, not the person wanting to commit suicide, but the people that were singing. They were singing, having a rehearsal, and the guy stopped and heard the lyrics. And he entered the, the church, and they didn't know who he was, but he said, I was about to kill myself until I heard what you guys were singing. It was a rehearsal. Just a rehearsal. So don't do things as unto yourself. Do it as unto the Lord. And this is, these are people who, who are actually putting in hard work. So we can put a better applause than that <laughs> together. I mean, let's give them a round of applause for what they're doing. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> this is um, something I've taught before, but not in this manner, not in this fashion. Um, I want to speak to you about from dead spa places to open spaces. From dead places, you could say that, from dead places to open spaces. This is a word to encourage you, but not to only encourage, not just to encourage you, but to reveal something that's just simply true. You've been delivered from a, a place that wasn't, have you noticed there has been times where you try to start a business and it, it, it just didn't go well. Seemed to die on the table. Have you noticed that sometimes you would try to get things done and people are arguing with you and fighting with you? Never had the right team? Have you noticed things like that? Have you noticed barren people, not just women, that also, also that, Women that couldn't bear children. People that couldn't bear their dreams. They wanted to give birth to their dreams and they couldn't. And have you ever had those problems? Have you ever had those problems where you were trying to birth something that you had in your mind and in your heart? You know God gave you the dream, but it seemed like no one's with you. Has that ever happened to you? Well, that ends tonight. 
And some of y'all are happy and some of y'all are not. But you will be happy by the end of this. <laughs> so one thing that I was thinking about to myself was, um, what qualified me anyway to be able to do and achieve any type of dreams? And then I was thinking about this story. Because every time mom and dad ask me to preach, quite honestly, I don't want to do it. And I usually try to run. And it reminds me of someone in the scripture. Does it remind you guys of someone in the scripture? Jonah. <laughs> Jonah. So I looked up Jonah. Jonah's an interesting story. Everybody thinks they know it. They really might. They might not. I don't think they know it like it should be known. See, God knew Jonah was stubborn and wanted to run. That's exactly why he picked him. And sometimes we think we're not qualified. Let me take you through the story. Can we go to Jonah chapter 1? This is, this is quite interesting. <laughs> Listen, you're going to be flying by the end of this. So I want to show you something that's quite interesting with Jonah. And why God picked Jonah? Because a lot of us don't know everything about the story. Uh, are you my reader tonight? Sure. Designated reader. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Divine. <laughs> Not only does he sing, he reads. Y'all don't care, I do. <laughs> I care because I don't have to do it. It's a teamwork, right? He reads, I preach. That's good. All right, go ahead, designated. Verse 1. <laughs> now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amitya, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. All right, stop right there. So that's kind of like me, right? Put it in my story. It's like... Pass it on and sends me a text, you're preaching tonight. And then I go, hmm. And then it's, it's like I'm watching Food Network and then I'm trying to find a way to get up. I'm trying to escape. And then when I try to tell dad I don't want to preach, he just smiles. <laughs> he just smiles at me like, I don't care. So, <laughs> keep going, keep going. Keep going, Divine. All right. But verse 3. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tashish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a sheep going to Tashish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tashish from the presence of the Lord. Stop! God needed him to do that. God knew he would do that. So he said, I need you to preach, Jonah. And Jonah's like, no. Goes, gets, pays for a ship. I'm going on a cruise. And God was like, good. Because the, they were going to, he had to go to the great city of Nineveh, which is very important to know. It was the great city of Nineveh. It's very important. You guys understand that? Nineveh. It's very important to know it was Nineveh. Nineveh. Okay? All right, keep going. Verse 4. Nineveh. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the sheep was like to be broken. Five. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the sheep into the sea to lighten it off them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the sheep. Go ahead. And, lay he, and he lay and was fast asleep. Six. So the sheep master came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, 
that we perish not. Slow down for a second. Doesn't that sound like Jesus' story? He was sleeping on the boat. Right? Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? And, and yeah, yeah. And, and just remember, Jesus later on in the scripture refers to himself like Jonas. He said, I'm like Jonas, which is, who's Jonah? But anyways, keep going. That was just a side note. Oh, matter of fact, let me just say this much. A lot of people say we're in the same boat, blah, 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 and they don't respect the people that they're around. But let me tell you this, too, that's very important. You need to recognize the Jesus on your boat. Sometimes there's people that are around you, and just because they're the same situation they're in, they're not treating it the same. And then you, yourself, should be the Jesus on your boat. But that's just a side note. Keep going. Verse 7. And they said everyone to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for who caused this evil that is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Verse 8. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? Verse 7. And I'm sorry, where do you work? <laughs> Who are you? They're about to toss this boy overboard. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. Verse 9. And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Verse 10. Then unto the men exceedingly, then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Verse 11. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may become unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Verse 12. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea become unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. 14. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. All right. The Lord already prepared this fish to do this. <laughs> yeah. Now what you guys need to pay attention to is that he was going to Nineveh. Y'all like, why, why is that important? Nineveh was named after Nina, the sea god. So what Jonah got swallowed up by was their sea creature that they worshipped. So, I'll end up the story for you. When he gets there, and he finally gets delivered from Sheol, which I'll tell you about, or the grave, as some people say, what actually happened was, is he arrived looking like he was using the sea creature they worship as a boat. And so as soon as he's ready to preach his long sermon about repent, as soon as he goes in there, he just starts saying to people, repent. And they're like, yeah, we're going to do it. All right, whatever. And he was upset because he wanted to preach. But here's the whole point. God qualified him just because by qualifying him, he knew he, he would use him, being stubborn as he is, to deliver Nineveh. I'm going to use him because he's stubborn. And I know he's going to do what he's about to do. And I'm going to use him to deliver these people. And that's exactly what happened. So when you say you're not qualified, do you know what you're really saying? 
You're talking about someone who really wasn't qualified or didn't seem like it in our eyes. He didn't seem so qualified. He was stubborn. He wanted to run and not do his own thing. So, so that was just to war about what I'm talking about here. Um, we're going from dead places to open spaces. We're going from dead places to open spaces. You guys understand what that says. So the Bible says, um, let's go to, uh, I want to keep this kind of short because I got a lot of scripture I could read, but I don't want to do that. Um, there's a place called Sheol, to keep it simple. And the place called Sheol was like a mindset of death. So every time someone wanted to produce something, there was always death in the way. There was always something stopping it. There was always this negativity in the way. There was always these dreams getting blocked and things never happening, nothing never working. And it was Sheol. It was this place that they kept entering, they kept going into. And Joseph's father, when he thought his son was dead, Joseph, he said, I'm going to bury my head in Sheol. It was a place of mourning that he would never leave. You get what I'm saying? So his mindset was always on dead things. But we don't have to be in that mindset because he delivered us from Sheol. He delivered us out of death. Let's go to Psalm verse six, chapter 6, verse 5. Excuse me. He delivered us out of Sheol. You don't have to deal with dead things anymore. I believe that's it, yeah. For in death there is no remembrance of thee. In the grave, who shall give thee thanks? When you have a dead mindset, you can't even praise God. You can't even be thankful of who he is. When you're, when you're dead-minded, you can't do what God wants you to do. His ideas can't get through. That's why I say to a lot of people, always have the right attitude towards God. But that attitude has to be an attitude of shifting from the Sheol idea, from the dead idea in your mind. Because you've been delivered from it. But where's your mind at? A lot of people don't understand one thing. Just because you're free doesn't mean you let your mind believe it. The truth about it is, is that sometimes we have things that we don't allow ourselves to believe because we're not humble enough. And we think it's humility to say, oh, I, don't, I don't deserve that, God, and stuff like that. God made you. You're his idea. That is not for you to determine. It is not for you to determine whether you deserve this or that. If he bled and if his son, he sent his son to bleed and die for you. And he said that you're worth that, then you're worth it. I heard people say, oh, I'm a worm. And I would sit there in the church and be like, I mean, I was in school like at the time. I'm like, you're clearly not a worm. You stupid. I didn't get it. I thought they were lost. I was like, why do you keep saying that? Oh, no, we're, we're just... We're, it's like, come on, man. Why do you think that you're less than what God told you? Come on, let's go. You're not your own idea. That's why when people say nobody's perfect, you hear people say that all the time, right? Nobody's perfect. I... I, I I sit there and I'm like, who changed my name to nobody? Because perfection is not man's idea. So while they're looking at flaws and, oh, well, this and that, and this is why you don't qualify. Wait a minute. Hold up. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, hold up. Because I'm not your idea. I'm God's idea. And if he sees me as he sees me, then I'm good. I'm perfect like he said. That's why he said to Abram, walk before me and be thou perfect. Why would he ask somebody to be perfect if they couldn't be? It's not an achievement, it's who you are. Perfection is not an accident. You don't slip in perfection, it's the excellent spirit that's in you. I felt like going through my notes, but I don't feel like it no more. I feel like doing what I do. 
what I'm saying? Let me tell you something else, too, while we're at it. I was looking at Corinthians the other day. And um, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, right? I was reading it, and I'm pretty sure Apostle told us this. I'm pretty sure he did. But, you know, this is why you have to keep hearing. That's why, let me tell you something about Apostle Charles and Pastor Donna. Let me tell you something before I go further. When they teach, don't listen to them at the speed of your, your learn, at your, the speed of your thinking, but at the speed of your learning. Not the speed of their speech, but the speed of the, your learning. Which means you're going to have to hear it again and again and again because faith is not heard it's hearing it's something that needs to keep happening it has to keep happening because if it doesn't keep happening then you're gonna have a dirty word by the end of the day it's like not taking a shower every day you took a shower Monday and you're like I'm good for the rest of the week no you're not <laughs> you won't find out what mayonnaise really smell like You know, the biggest problem with Christianity is now that people can't get people saved is because they come standard. They don't come with the features. They're too busy coming basic. Stop coming basic to the people. There are miracles inside of you. And you're coming in like a Datsun 86. You have all these features and you're coming in standard. With your basic Bible principles. Oh, you know, to be wise, we got to be wise. So COVID-19, what we're going to do is wear a mask. You wear a mask. I'm a superhero without a mask. It's my turn. So, listen, let me think about it. I'm, I'm going to have to tell you something here. Listen, let me tell you something. While we're talking about the month of speed, did you know that patience is actually for acceleration? Patience is not for slowing you down. Because when you're, when you're doing things too fast, you skip steps. And what happens when you skip steps? You stumble. And you're not in the race when you're on the floor. You got people trying to run marathons with one foot and... <laughs> Get yourself together. Get yourself together. Be patient. That's, that's the one thing about it that I, I, I actually had an advantage of when I didn't want to preach. At least I was patient enough to wait. I listened to dad for years and didn't say anything. I didn't want to preach to nobody. Hey, 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 hey you, you know what I learned? You know what? Look, look, look. The Bible says, the word that I've hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you, hide it there, put it there, protect it, seal it, make sure that you're getting all you can out of it, and then use it, and then tell people it works. Don't go by someone else's testimony. What was I preaching about? Oh, we might as well talk about it, huh? Oh, yeah, from dead places to open spaces. We need to come out of the dead thinking, man. Everybody trying to relay down um, all these religious thoughts. and yeah, Are you smoking cigarettes, brother? You need to change. Man, let me tell you something. There's one thing when you tell somebody to change, and there's another thing when you, being a changed person, changed up somebody. When your actions make people inspired and go, I want to be like you. I'm going to take this cigarette and throw it out. I'm going to take this blunt and get rid of it. I'm not going to go to the liquor store, because something about you, you're already on a high. What's up with you? 
While we're on the subject, God doesn't mind you being a drunkard. He doesn't want you to be an alcoholic. Be a drunkard in the spirit. Get drunk off the spirit and stay there. Stay drunk. But just don't be an alcoholic. You got to know what to drink. There's a new wine you can drink. And it's not the corny wine that people get in the store and they get DUIs for. Get drunk and save your money and drive. It's better off. Let me talk about this for real quick. Um, let me talk about that. Uh, do we want to Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six? Yes. Let's read that. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six. Dad for said this before. I'm pretty sure you said this. I know he did. I know. For God. Read, read it loud. Read it with a loud voice. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You read that scripture, right? And then we go say, we're the light. You are the light, that's true. That's not what that scripture is saying. Okay, because the scripture is saying something else. It's not saying that the light he commanded shines in you. Read it again. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. Stop. So let's read it like I would read it. The same God that commanded light to shine out of darkness is the God that's shining in your heart, not the light. That's right. That's right. The same God that commanded the light to shine out of darkness is the same God shining in your heart, not the light. Hallelujah. It's a better deal. Amen. We think God gave us a candlestick. Here, brother. <laughs> This little light of mine, uh, I'm going to let it shine. <laughs> Take your light and just throw it in the trash, please. Because God didn't come and give you light. He came and sat inside your heart. That's why you're shining. Oh, yeah. And we're waiting for the sweet Sweet, we're waiting for the what's that swing low, sweet cherry? Swing low. You want God to come, come, you know, people want Jesus to come back and oh, save us from our misery. Jesus. You know, COVID 19 is about to be 20. Oh, but you know what I found out? When COVID, when coronavirus is 21, it can drink itself. <laughs> the reality of it is, you know what the reality of it is? I'm telling you, I'll tell you the truth. If my wife told me she had COVID-19, I'd tongue kiss her. Because it doesn't matter. I'm not, it's not contagious for me. People do scare, oh, we're talking about believers. I'm not talking about people that don't know the word. I'm talking about people that say they know Jesus. Are sitting there going, you six feet apart, you got a mask. One guy at the supermarket, I was standing right here, and he was right there. And he was like, hey, brother, hey. I was like, oh, okay. And I went all the way in the back of the aisle. And he was like, well, I didn't mean that, brother. I said, well, what's the difference? I mean, what do you want from me? Because, you know, five feet, but six feet? Yeah, all right. Thank you. It's like we got all these rules and regulations and we're scared to pronounce Jesus. Pronounce. 
Say his name correct. Don't say God just to hide it. Oh, God. What about Jesus? Say the name. Say the name. Yeah. Say the name Jesus. Oh, I remember, I remember I've been in the hospital and they were like, well, we don't understand why you're, st you're, man, you're doing well. I said, Jesus. That's why. And they were like, well, you know, you know, you know, we, you know, science. And I said, yeah, he's a scientist. Not from me. So give me my salty food. Just go. <laughs> Let me tell you this too. Since we're on the f subject of speed, like I said, patience is f for acceleration. Um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. You don't have to be in a dead place anymore. Make some movement. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? Before we go there, this scripture means a lot to me. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 through 6. 54, verse 1 through 6. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with Excuse the you, divine, divine. I, I need you to I need you to put some umph in this. So start again. Just put some over. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, yeah. thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent. And let them stretch forth the curtains. Are you expecting something? Amen. <laughs> Good. <laughs> if you're expecting something, the days that you couldn't bear, even the women. Man, I saw something last, I saw it and I saw some things last year and I didn't mention it. But it has a lot to do with what I'm teaching. There were a lot of things that were being blocked. And the devil thought he had his way. Oh, I'm getting my way here. And then he just got shut down. And it started happening right here in this church. One of the things he tried to do was stop apostle. COVID-19, you're going to have to shut down. And dad's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and I was like, are we going to shut down? Or what do you want us to do? Because I don't know. Ha, 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 ha. Let's build the office downstairs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there were things that were supposed to be stopped. But because we kept pushing, right. there's a blessing Amen. specially suited for us. Amen. Oh, I know about it already. <laughs> Do you? That's why we could break forth and singing. Because barrenness, man, no woman sings when they're barren. No woman's happy when they're barren. If they want to bear, they're not happy. If they can't. But when you break forth in singing, there's something you're expecting. When you enlarge your capacity, there's something you're expecting. Oh, get ready. Start to expect because you want some speed or you're going to get it this month. It's time for speed. Oh, that was a light amen. I'll take it though. Oh, there's people that are excited. Uh, but I heard, I know the Bible says, shout, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. So triumph actually has a voice, and Whoa. it's loud. And, and some people are like, amen, amen. <laughs> but that's okay. Because the amen is an amen. amen. Something's happening. Oof. Yeah, something's happening. Man, I've seen it. I'm telling you guys, you guys are looking at it like, yeah, I can't wait for it to happen. Well, when it hits, you guys are going to be like, oh, yeah. For real. You don't know then. God doesn't want you to play, stay in a place of death. 
God doesn't want you in a place where nothing's being born and nothing's, nothing's happening, there's no life. He said, I come to give you life and have it more abundantly. So an overflowing life, what's death for? Has nothing to do with it. Just so you know, death is not a part of life. When you're dead, you're dead. Has nothing to do with life. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, keep, keep going. There's more. <laughs> There's more, I forgot. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords. Don't hold back. Spare not. Don't hold back. And strengthen thy stakes. Go ahead, go ahead, man. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate city to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. Hey. Hey. Keep going. Hey, hey. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth yes. and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Keep going, keep going. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord has called thee uh, as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth. When thou wast, oh, when thou was refused, said the Lord. I think he went too far. Yeah, that was verse six already. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So basically, <laughs> it's time to get ready. Get ready for what though? Get ready to move. Start making moves. Why? Because you're never going to see anything happen that God said if you're going to sit there dormant. All right, so I'm sorry. The first point is that God's a qualifier. The second point is that he delivered us out of Sheol, death. The third point is now has the authority to banish never. Now has the authority to banish never. Now, since y'all are needing to hear it again, why don't y'all repeat it after me. Now, now has the authority, has the authority to, banish to banish never, never. For, good. for good. What does that mean? Go to Hebrews 11. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter, chapter 11. Verse one. You might read the whole chapter if we got enough time. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith... Stop. Say it again. Now faith... Stop. Let's read it again. Now faith... Now... Not tomorrow. It doesn't say tomorrow faith. It says now faith. Why? Why does it say that? Because if it isn't now, it isn't faith. It's still struggling with the word. If you don't move now, then you never did. But that's why now can banish never. If you've never healed the sick before, now you can. What about now? You're still here. Sick people are still here. If you haven't raised the dead before and you failed at it, that was never. This is now. Where's your faith at now? Where's your faith at now? You ever think about that? You get what I'm saying? Now faith. Now has the power. It has the authority to do that. It could say, you know what, never? I know it didn't happen, but today, right now, it's going to happen. 
And all you have to do is step out in faith. And stop worrying about what never happened. And what never became of. And what dreams died. And what, what happened here. And what happened there. And what relationship failed. And what this and that. And all the, oh, but what about the past? And what, what about the past? It passed. The old things have passed away. So even the past died. So stop trying to dig up the past. The past is dead. If old things passed away, that means the past died. There was a funeral held for the past already. Old things have passed. Old have passed. The past already died. Why are you digging it up? Now has the authority to banish never. Now can tell never. Now. Now faith. I didn't have the faith before, but now. This faith. The faith I have today. Now this faith. The faith I just heard. Now this faith. Not the faith I had yesterday, but now you're dealing with this faith. You're not dealing with yesterday's faith. You're dealing with today's faith. Some of y'all are catching it, and some of y'all are going to catch it. It's all good. I'm still Tom Brady with it, you feel me? So, <laughs> keep going. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Just know that you're not on that side. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You're not hoping for it. You have the substance. Some people don't see the evidence. You have it. Talking about two different people in that scripture. Saying faith is the substance of things that, are, that people do hope for. It's the evidence of things that people haven't seen yet. But who said you didn't see it? Who, ha who said you haven't seen faith work? Who said you haven't had that substance in you? The substance is in you. So that's why you have the power to say now. <laughs> Now I'm going to raise the dead. I didn't do it yesterday, but what's that got to do with now? Don't be a punk when it comes to the devil. He's trying to punk you, but don't be a punk. He's the punk. He's the one that doesn't have the power. And he's trying to convince you that you don't have power. But he wanted to be you. Sounds like jealousy, doesn't it? That's exactly what it is. He wanted to be you. He wanted to be a son of God. He wanted to be. He couldn't be because he wasn't you. Keep going. We might have to read this whole chapter. For by, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Go ahead. Through obtained a good report. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. If you read this whole chapter, it keeps saying, by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith. And the next part says, this good report, that good report, this good report, that good report, this good report, that good report. Why ain't that your story? Oh, it is. That's right. That's your story. That's the life you're living. That's the life you will live if you haven't experienced it yet. That's right. This is yours. That's right. It's not just mine. One person say, oh, you healed the sick because, you know, you're Blake, man. You learned from up on. Yeah, you can do the same. Give me that bathroom talk. You know what's funny about churches? The Bible says a house divided against itself can't stand, right? A house divided against itself can't stand. But the way we read it, we think a house divided can't stand. No, a house needs to be divided. It just can't be divided against itself. A house needs divisions. You need a bathroom. You need a kitchen. You need a living room. Because if your toilet is in the kitchen, I'm not eating there. <laughs> I 
But that's how we look in churches a lot of times. The toilet wants to be the kitchen. I mean, the bathroom wants to be the kitchen. And then the kitchen wants to be the living room. I don't want to hear or smell you cooking and you cooking right next to me. I'm trying to watch TV, man. I'm trying to read a book and you got steak right there. You know what I'm saying? It's a tough choice. <laughs> you want me to do that, man? I'm like, good book, steak, good book. You know, so my point is, is that we all have a qualifying part that we all have to use. And the reason why I'm saying this is because the only way you're going to know that is by faith. Why? Because faith works by love and love deletes all these insecurities. All the insecurities you might have about, oh, I need to do this. Oh, well, well, I, well, maybe I could preach like this one. Or maybe I could play the drums like this. One. <laughs> and then next thing you know, you try and be everything. And then you're good at nothing. Don't do that. You have a team worth of people? Go ahead and let them. Someone asked me, oh, Blake. <sighs> Is there something wrong? And it wasn't you guys, so don't think it's you. Is there something wrong? You're not playing drums anymore. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong. What do you mean? Is there something wrong? You're not. I said, we got three drummers in the house outside of me. Let them play drums. Yeah, but brother, you always played. Yeah, but being comfortable is not cool. This is uncomfortable up here. It's not comfortable for me. But I put those shoes on and I walked in them because I ain't scared of anything. Apostle told me a couple times, hey, you're going to teach? And I'm like, you sure? That's a dumb question to ask him, by the way. Of course he's sure. It's not like he didn't think of it. But I'm asking him because I'm not sure. I told him, which I shouldn't have told him, I said, I need to focus on some of the, you know, the deacon stuff anyway. He just looked at me, he's like, all right. And then he gave me that John Van Dam, John Claude Van Dam kick. And I was like, oh, I'm going to preach him? Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And it's like, man, you can, you can feel uncomfortable, you can be afraid, and you can feel all this stuff. But as long as you get up here and let the Holy Ghost use you, doesn't matter. Whatever you're feeling, doesn't matter. And all those things that were your past, it doesn't matter. Every time the devil tried to mention something about your past, you just go, one me. One me. Oh, but you did this. One me. Oh, but you did this. Play. Remember you did it? One me. Five minutes ago. Don't, don't matter. If it was five minutes ago, you knew you messed up. Man, I, don't know. I shouldn't have did that, guy. Devil come and he, five minutes ago, you did that. One me. Why? Because you're growing every minute. Do you know how fast light moves? And you have God as God is shining in you. That's why someone said, someone said to me, how old are you? I said, listen, that's going to be an equation you can't really. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? What an equation. So first of all, God doesn't give us answers. He gives us the end of the equation. We are the answer. He just gives us the equation. We answer. So anyways, I said, well, you imagine, how many days did I spend with the Lord? I don't know. I said, well, right there, that's too much. A day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Do so you want to figure out how old I am? <laughs> how much time have I spent with him? And you're trying to figure out how old I am? How about you just stick to the basics? Can I cook? Yeah. Let's talk about stuff like that. What's my favorite color? Yeah. Let's talk about stuff like that. Sometimes we're trying to figure out people. Do 
to qualify them. But like I said before, perfection is not your idea. It was God's idea. That's why he has a right to call you perfect. Look, if I made, listen, I can't go up to Lamborghini and say, this is now a Blake. I didn't make it. You get what I'm saying? I can't rename it. I can't give it. I, I can't call it what I want to call it. It's not me. I didn't make it. The one who made it is the one you refer to when you need to know who you are. It's a principle. It's a principle. That which did not create you cannot tell you who you are. Now, that which can, did not create you can't tell you who you are. But if they know your creator, then they'll tell you the truth about you. That's why we could get up here and preach. Because we know the truth about you according to the word of God and not the word of man, word of friends, word of dumb, word of social media, word of Facebook, word of green book, black book, whose book, your book, only one book. Take a look, it's in that book. And then you can really find out about the rainbow. So the word of God is sharp too. The word of God is sharp. Thank you, our sharp right now. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> listen to the word. Listen, listen to this. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God, right? But you're born of the word. So you... What? Did y'all catch it? Oh, well, we're going to have to read it since y'all didn't catch it. I think you caught it. But maybe you didn't catch it. So let's go to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. First of all, in the beginning was. The Word was before the beginning. The Word didn't begin with the beginning. The Word was already there. Ha <laughs> ha! Cowabunga. Cowabunga. So I'm born of what God made the earth with. I'm born of what the beginning began with, which means I'm, born, I'm born of what God began everything with. I was born with the same thing God began everything with. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Was meaning it's always been. The word's been there before the beginning. That's why the Bible, see, that's why we operate in eternity. The Bible says that, lo, I will be with you even until the end of time, which is the right translation. Even time has an expiration date. You don't. Time will expire. He said, I'll be with you, which means that you're not going to expire with time. You won't expire when time expires. You're getting it. Are you eating it? Does it taste good? Did I, did I put it? Did I stir it right? I'm going to tell you something. Time is going to expire. You're going to be there with God watching it. Lo, I will be with you always, even till the end, end of time. Time will end. You will not. You are of eternity, outside of time, outside the param parameters of time, outside of the limitation of time. Time was originally put here just to determine seasons. It wasn't put here to bind you up. A lot of people think that time was here so we can just, oh, well, you know, everybody's time's going to be up soon. <laughs> Speak for your left foot. <laughs> That's not my religion, homie. Right. I'm free from that nonsense. A <laughs> doctor tell you, oh, well, you only have this much time to live. I said, what time was I made? 
Hung, huh? Well, what does that have to do with anything? How can you tell anybody what time they're going to be made and what time they're going to go when you didn't have the idea of who they were? You don't really know what they're made of. You think you've seen everything. You think you know, but you have no idea. Did you see the God shining in my heart? Did you see him? He's shining, not light. <laughs> not just all this little light. Matter of fact, to actually clarify something, light is a function. The Bible says you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth and light of the world. Which means the world and the earth are different. Two different functions for them. That's another teacher for another day. It's not my turn to teach that. <laughs> Where are we at? Well, we might as well talk about it. Say to somebody, welcome to Rehoboth. You guys are looking at me funny. Welcome to Rehoboth. Just say to somebody. Believe me, Rehoboth is a good place in the spirit. Welcome to Rehoboth. Ha, welcome to Rehoboth, everybody. What is Rehoboth? Well, you went from dead places, which was Sheol, and now you're in open spaces, which is Rehoboth. Let's go to Genesis 26. We'll start at verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundred and hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Verse, 12, verse 13. And the man waxed great and went forth and grew until he became very great. And for, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistine envied him. 15. For all the wells which his father's servant had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them ah, and filled them ah, with. Ah, right there, right there. He went to his father's wells and they were stopped up. He went to a place where he used to have success and the success was clogged up now. Keep going. And filled them with earth. 16. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac depart, departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. Verse 18. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. And the Philistine had stopped them after the death of Abraham. Here we go again. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Verse 19. And Isaac's servant digged in the valley and found there, and found there a well of springing water. Mm -hmm. And the herdmen of Gerard did strive with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac. Here we go. Because they strove with him. And they digged, verse 21, and they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of the it Rehoboth. And said, and he said, for now the Lord has made room for us. If you read it in the Message Bible, it reads open spaces because that's what Rehoboth means. Now what is this about? Well, we went from dead places, right? So now we're in open spaces. There will not be an argument when you start a business now. It's the month of speed. There will not be a fight. There will be no one claiming anything that belongs to you. You're in Rehoboth now and you're not leaving. 
You're not leaving. Open spaces means opportunity for what you want to do. And God put you in that place. He brought us from a dark, dirty, poor place, and he brought us into a wealthy place. We've been through the fire. We've been through the flood. Kingdom Embassy, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I've watched you guys. I know a lot of your stories. I know my story. Well, guess what? Boring! The story that's happening now is so much better. Because now no one will stop you. No one's going to stop you. Nothing's going to stop you. No thought, no process, no plans. You know when Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, he spoke to cause and effect. That's why he spoke to the wind and the waves. The wind was causing it. The effect was the waves. So God is going to speak on your behalf. And everything that's been causing and affecting is going to die. Amen. People are going to stop in the middle of a rumor. Oh, did you hear? Oh, forgot. Never mind. Never mind, I forgot the rumor. The lies that were being spread about. Hey, man, you know how many times I've been lying on the last couple of years? <laughs> I've been laughing about it, too. I'm going to tell you something, though. The lies, the rumors, all that stuff, it's all over now because you're in Rehoboth. This is the month of speed. Your speed is going to be here because of Rehoboth and things are going to be moving and you're just going to be like, wow, I didn't know it could be this easy. I promise you it's going to be like that. I know what God's saying when he's saying it. The Bible says you got you guys could look at the sun and tell what this is and that is and all this stuff, but you can't determine what season it is in the spirit. Of course, I could tell it's Rehoboth. It's time for the devil to just be sad all the time. Yes. Not that he wasn't, but still. I'm going to tell you something here because there's been times we've been fighting for things to work. And we've been, we've been thinking, oh, I got success, man. And then someone said, no, no, that's, that's our land. That belongs to us. Not your story anymore. Not your story anymore. Somebody yell, welcome to Rehoboth. Look at your neighbor because it's for you guys. Welcome to Rehoboth. Welcome to open spaces. Welcome to open spaces. Let me tell you what open spaces really means. It means there's opportunity that won't be found until you step out. Until you step out and look for it. When you feel like looking for it, that's when you'll get it. I feel like it. Success. 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 Don't make me moonwalk. But I'm telling you something. God is going to start revealing things in your life. Because listen, God is bored with unsuccessful Christians. He's getting bored with it. Everyone acting like, oh, well, I'm just going to keep my cup of butter and just live off of some bread for a week. Jesus didn't die for you so you could eat peanut butter and jelly on a spinach wrap. Ramen noodles for four weeks. <laughs> this stuff is actually not that bad. It's not that bad. I'm starting to believe in myself. It's not that bad. No, it's bad. The extra sodium is keeping me up. Stop getting used to not being blessed. Oh, yes. Yes. Don't be used to that. Get uncomfortable with that. Oh, well, you know. And let me tell you something. Just because you change departments doesn't mean you change your life. Just because you change boyfriends doesn't mean you're getting better. And just because you got divorced and then decided to start lifting weights doesn't mean you're looking for, for much more in life. You know what makes you look like you're looking for more in life? When you do something that changes someone else's. Stop focusing on your weakness 
and hoping that someone will come along and help you. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? I, I, I move and I, I do things. I don't look for support. People ask me, oh, oh, well, you know, why don't, why don't people support? I need support. I need, you got people on Facebook trying to have people at gun for, uh, gunpoint for support. You got to support me. Oh, you got to, oh, if you don't believe in me, then I don't know. I don't know. Do you know successful businesses don't even have to come out and say support me? That's right. They just come out with better product exactly. all the time. Exactly. And you have a Jesus that can do better every time. He's looking to outdo himself every time. And you're boring yourself and me and everyone that believes by going around with your ramen noodle mentality and doing nothing. It's time to start doing something. If you started off small and you don't know anything, you don't know any word, well, guess what? Do you have a good heart? Do you have good intentions? Start there. Because you don't have to be. I remember people told me, oh, I'm a general in God. I don't know what that means. Am I a lieutenant? Oh, I'm a general. Well, generally speaking, you seem basic. <laughs> Preaching basic stuff. Preaching, preaching all this basic stuff like, oh, you know what? When God delivered Moses, <laughs> man, miss me with all that. When, when God, you know what the problem was? Man, when, when, I, when I first heard the story of Jonah, it wasn't like I taught it, but it wasn't like I learned it either. People just reading through it and going, oh, I'm going to just say what that guy said. Jonah was stubborn, and that's why, you know, he was mean. And <sighs> you know, people always talk about you know, Peter. Peter was walking on one, and then, and then he, he lost balance because he wasn't focused. Did you walk on water? The same preacher wouldn't dare walk on water, but he's talking about someone else. Oh, he lost focus. And you're scared of, you're scared of COVID-19. Someone asked me, oh, 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 aren't you worried about COVID-19? I said, what color is it? What's the shape of it? Oh, what's that mean? I said, you talk about me, about saying I, I have a God that I don't see. But you have a COVID that you don't see. And that's a God to you. It's a God to you. COVID's your God. My God is my God. And you're worried about me? You're talking about me? Stick to your tired biscuits and gravy while I get my steak. Because when you don't have the word of God like I have it, you can't criticize me and things that I'm doing because you don't understand it. It might be weird to you, but that's because, you know, some people, they, not everyone's going to understand you. And guess what? They're not supposed to. It's scriptural. If people understand you, there's not much to you. So not everyone's going to understand you. Not everyone's going to understand the moves you made. You're going to have to make the moves anyway. You're going to have to do things that might seem controversial, not for the sake of being controversial, but because you had to make a move. You don't have to be controversial. Let me tell you, the word of God already is. <laughs> You're already going to do things that, you know, people are not going to necessarily love, but it's all right. Don't look for people to accept you. Don't look for it. Don't fight for it. I don't have to fight for anyone's approval. Someone told me stuff like that. Oh, I don't approve of your methods. I don't approve of caring. <laughs> Did I ask you like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I disapprove of caring, sorry. So as I understand it, that's the end of my teaching. But as I understand it, the man of God's coming up. 
right? So he's coming up. Why don't we all stand on our feet and give him the appropriate hand clap he deserves? I think he has his own mic. <laughs> he is the dad of this house. He is, I'm going to tell you, he is special to me. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Now, that was too little. Come on, let's clap our hands and celebrate what God is doing. Hallelujah. Dick and Blake. He, he almost made me run around, not the church, around the neighborhood. That was fireworks. Wow. Everybody say wow. wow. Say wow. wow. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Just take a, take a moment and just sit down. I'm not, uh, he, he is the speaker tonight. He's a preacher tonight. Now, one of the things I want to tell you is this. You never know what's in you until you use it. Are you hearing me? So he's been a deacon for years here, and we know what he could do. And when I told him, I said, oh, next Wednesday, just get ready. It's like, Dad. No escaping here. We know where you live. <laughs> that was brilliant. And she just excited we have him in the house. The world is yet to see the full impact of what God is going to do in him. Amen? Amen? Are you excited? I see what God is doing in you. And this is what we're going to be doing. Um, just making sure we can get a lot of things in place. This is your family. This is your house. You know, when he was speaking about some things, understanding, everybody say my understanding. Say my understanding. Do you realize you can you can just you can stop the music, it's fine. Do you realize this? Just take them. Do you realize that your understanding can unlock the wisdom you've been carrying all these years? Do you realize that? You understand everybody's in my understanding. The Bible says, give me understanding and I shall live. That means I'm dying. So if I have understanding, death is stopped. If I have understanding, and this is what he's talking about tonight, just as he was teaching... Your, the eyes of your understanding was just flooded with light. And all of a sudden, life was flowing in you. Isn't it? But that's what it should be. When you hear the truth of God's word, it should light up your life. In other words, you should be, the Bible says the, the righteous shall shine brighter than the firmaments. In other words, the sun has nothing on you. Can I have a big amen? Do you know the sun is darkness in heaven? You didn't know that. See, it was when Jesus appeared to Paul or Saul of Tarsus. He said there was a light that was brighter than the noonday sun. Now, sun at noontime is the highest brightness you can have. But this one was so bright that it blinded his eyes. Now, remember in the dark, you don't really see anything. So when the light is so bright, you cannot, it's so bright that you cannot really look right at it. That means whatever was there before was darkness. A 
Ephesians 1 verse 17 it says I pray that God will give the spirit of wisdom and revelation everybody say wisdom say revelation say wisdom say revelation it said he will give the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him then the next part says that the eyes of your understanding like I said I'm not preaching I want you to understand that when he started talking understanding was coming in it was all of a sudden a curtain was pulled back can somebody say amen never look at a man look at the God and the man are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because you can miss the God in a man or a woman because you're considering them after the flesh. I was enjoying the worship in the back. I didn't want to come here. I wanted to sit in the back and just enjoy myself. God was speaking. Can I have a big amen? Not Blake. The God who sits in Blake was speaking. Yes. Learn to honor the word. Yes. Can somebody say amen? amen? Because you can miss the God that sits in you because you're looking at the man that is speaking or the woman that is speaking. Mm. Don't never get too familiar with the word. Never get now. There's a difference between familiarity and acquaintance. Familiarity it means all of a sudden you're treating it common. Being acquainted means gaining knowledge or being in a place where you're receiving something. The Bible says, "Acquaint yourself now with the Lord." Not get familiar. Acquaint yourself with him. In other words, get to know him. He didn't say get to be familiar with him. Can I have a big amen? Because you say, well, I've heard that scripture. Never. The same scripture, when it's open, God is about to speak fresh as if he never spoke that scripture before. Yes. Can somebody say amen? That is how you approach the word of God. But when we talk to people sometimes, you know, one thing you have to learn also, stop apologizing to people for who you are. Like you said, they won't understand every move you make. You're not that they explain to them. When he was talking about open spaces, some of you don't understand that. <laughs> I just thought, okay, I'm just going to just help you. When it says open spaces, that means you're out of jail now. Possess the land. In other words, you've been so confined a long time with this death thinking that now he says, no, you're not dead. Look as far as you can see. Open space. As far as your eyes can see, it's yours. Open space. Do you know when there is an empty space, there is a fight to occupy it? Have you ever had an empty space around you, in your house? There's always something that's looking to get there. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. I said, I think it would look nice here. <laughs> How many of you have been there before? It's the same thing when there's a vacuum in anything. It's a power vacuum. Something wants to fill it. Whenever there is a space, the natural flow is things that are overcrowding in a place want to flow to an empty space. Capacity. Everybody say capacity. Say capacity. So your eyes of understanding being flooded, all of a sudden you're saying that 
like he said, the things that used to be difficult, as he was speaking, I just thought, this is the time I can date to do anything. I can't fail. I cannot fail. In fact, if I fall in failure, I succeed. I can't fail. <laughs> You're a prisoner of success. You try this way, you succeed. You go that way, you succeed. It's like you keep winning and winning and winning and uh, you get tired of winning and you win some more. He's like, okay, uh, what am I going to do? I can't lose. Are you hearing me? When God speaks to you, stop going by your experiences. It's now. Everybody say it's now. As he was talking about faith, people don't understand the importance of moment. I don't care what happened five seconds ago. If I decide now, I move mountains. It doesn't matter how much is in the bank account. If I make that decision, the money will gravitate towards that space. Are you with me? Understanding. Everybody say understanding. understanding. Say understanding. understanding. The thing about understanding is also it brings the spirit of excellence. The Bible says a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. In other words, when you have understanding, you stop wasting time. Speed is the advantage of understanding. Because if you have understanding, you anticipate. When you anticipate, anticipation is the key to advantage. Can I say that one more time? Anticipation is the key to advantage. That means if I know it's about to happen, I position myself there while others are still thinking. When it drops, it drops on me. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Understanding. Everybody say understanding. So God is saying to you, they are open spaces. Why are you getting cramped up there? That new house. Get a big one. I've heard some people say, well, you know, I can't manage a house. Get somebody that can clean it for you. They have cleaning business. Got to keep everybody loaded. Can I have a big amen? So people come to us and say, you guys talk big and crazy. Oh no, we haven't started. We are in the warm-up room. You know, you got to warm up before you go and play. So you think we're talking big? Wait till we come out. We don't have a megaphone. We have something bigger than that. The biggest amplifier you can ever find in the world. We have it. That means our actions speak so loud. Are you hearing me? When you take one step, everybody shouts. The Bible says, let them shout for joy that favor his righteous cause. And let them say continually that the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Do you know that God enjoys when you prosper? Yes. But the problem is, if you lack understanding, you always measure your success based on your last failure. Oh, well, I tried it yesterday, it didn't work, you know, you know how it always is here. It's always like that. Excuse me, be like the goldfish. You know something about a goldfish? It has the shortest memory. It forgot what happened 10 seconds ago. It doesn't remember it. That means it's irrelevant. It's the now. If you ask the goldfish, did you feel 10 minutes ago? He said, what's that? I have no memory of that. I just know now. 
can I have a big amen? amen? Did you fail 10 seconds ago? Oh no, I don't know what you're talking about. It wasn't me, right? It wasn't me. How do you say it? One me, one me. <laughs> Think I'll say. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it requires a school to say that. One me. Remember Eddie Murphy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Everybody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. For those of you that are watching us, I want you to know something. God has set before you open spaces, not just open doors. You see, the problem with this is we look at the open doors and stay there and say, wow, I have open doors. Beyond the doors are spaces. Take the land. Are you with me? Don't say, well, God has opened doors for me. Glory. Hallelujah. Beyond the door are spaces. Some people stand at the door and just say, hello. Because the Bible says, wherever the soles of your feet shall touch is yours. The land is yours. Legally. But it's never yours until you step into it. See, God told them, the land is yours. As far as you can see, it was theirs. But they had to possess it. You've got to step into it. Can somebody say amen? That means if you have to do a test drive of the house, enjoy. And I've heard some people say, well, it doesn't matter. We're just going to go to heaven. Excuse me. It doesn't make sense. People are trying. Some people said, I, I want to make it to heaven. I, I don't want to fail God. Excuse me. First of all, heaven is not my problem. I'm a citizen of heaven. If I'm a citizen of heaven, going back to heaven is not, nothing. It's like an American citizen coming home. What's the issue? So I'm a citizen of heaven. So I, I, I don't need these that are coming. And those that are trying to get to heaven, they need a visa. They don't belong there. They are visitors. The idea of us being here is to make earth like heaven. We have an agenda. Are you hearing me? Everybody you meet, everywhere you go, you see the glory of God just growing when you get there. Can somebody say amen? Because that scripture in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6, it says, the same God who come into light to shine out of darkness, the story is not light. That same God now shines in your heart, there is a purpose to it. God sits in your heart and shines to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. So if you have the knowledge of the glory you will shine that glory the light of the glory that's what shines in heaven that's what gives light in heaven in other words when you shine the glory you release heaven to your atmosphere did you get that did you get that the glory of God shall be your light that's what it says in revelations 22 for the glory of God, verse 5, shall be thy light. You shall reign with him. It tells in Revelation 22, the last chapter of the book. It said, the glory of the Lord shall be your light. Are you with me? The glory of the Lord shall be thy light. He shines in darkness to give the light of the knowledge. So, if you have the knowledge, you can turn it on whenever you want. If you know where the switch is, wouldn't you turn it on? Yes. In the glory is everything you need. Right. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Not glory when you're dead. When you're dead, it's not glory. Some people say, well, when we meet God in glory. 
he has been called to glory. That's nonsense. Called to glory. Sounds so holy. It's rubbish. Now, I'm just trying to get something. What he says, he says, open spaces. We have open doors, but beyond those doors are spaces. Are, are, are spaces. What do you do now? Take the land. Because if you don't, the law of space is whenever there is space, something wants to make its way there. You better be the first one out there. And possess the land in music, possess the land in business, possess the land in, in sports, possess every land that is available. Can I have a big amen? amen? That means wherever there is any kind of real estate. Real estate is not only physical. Can somebody say amen? amen. You can have real estate online, digital real estate. You can have music real estate. In other words, the music landscape you own it. What is it? Anything that becomes an asset that produces what you need is your real estate. Real estate. Did you get that? Estate, your domain. Real estate is not buildings. Buildings are real estate. But real estate goes beyond buildings. If you own half the internet, that's a big real estate. Because it's as real as the building. It's just land in a different form. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We are possessing every space. Can somebody say amen? amen? My encouragement is to let you know that this is the time of open space but remember, when he was teaching, all I could think about was the gold rush or the land grab. When, when the people will run to grab land, first one that gets in there, they will just open a territory and you go and claim your own stake. That's what the people do. Once you put your stake down, it's yours. That's a picture of what God is saying to us. I've set before you open doors, but beyond the open doors are spaces. Now, run and take the land. Stake your claim. Tell the neighbor, stake your claim. Stake your claim. Say, stake your claim. stake your claim. Let me tell you, wherever you speak, wherever you go into, they will listen to you. Amen. Can I have a big amen? amen? It's like landing on the moon and pinning your flag. I said, this belongs to us. Are you with me? Is this helpful to you? Thank you, Blake. That was too loaded. Come on, let's clap our hands and celebrate the man of God amen one of the things we're going to do I mean we're rounding this up for those online um, I, I, I was thinking you know we have to get um, the a new security system because there are some software glitches with the the cameras that will save us all the signing up and things like that but what we can do today is we can I, I want to give you an opportunity you're gonna bring your Titan offering it's gonna be fine but I want to give an opportunity we're gonna raise some um, money to just buy the security system we can do that very quickly so today I was at Best Buy looking at some other things interesting <laughs> very interesting and I was looking at him like uh, now somebody came here and uh, remember Oren the guy that was trying to tell us six thousand dollars to put security cameras around there I just laughed I said we have all the engineers in the house thank you but no thanks we can do the work easily the problem we have right now is the software does not allow communication because of the US government making sure that they couldn't hack into any other thing in the United States because it's a foreign um, product so we have to get a new security system so what we'll do is we're going to give a tithes and offerings and also we want to invest in securing I mean, we have some incredible equipment here we want to make sure we can secure it can I have a big amen now this is it whatever 
you do not take care of you're gonna lose are you hearing me whatever you don't give attention to you will not celebrate it if you don't celebrate it you're gonna lose it we thank God for God giving us this media and the upstairs the downstairs all of the wonderful things you guys invested in but it was stupid not protecting it somebody said to me but don't you just have the Holy Ghost be a watchman why do you need a sword ask Peter Jesus said if you don't have a sword go and get one why because when they see you with a sword they don't attack does that make sense no one attacks a hard target they attack a soft target are you with me so we want to make this a hard target you come here we can deal with you spiritually physically see how I, so I said it very softly physically no we're not gonna we're not gonna smack you we just give you the looks and you fall under the power and some people will say but are you you need to be serious listen to me being serious or not we just give the facts can I have a big amen I can smile and still wipe out the devil I don't have to have a scrunchy face now Blake I didn't know you were that funny I knew you were funny but you even preached and made some moves. He was dancing. And he brought me back to some old videos. I was like, man, the anointing does something. His moves has improved. <laughs> I was like, Blake, oh no, no, don't dance. And he, he cut that move. I'm like, whoa, he, he. You've been watching Divine too much. your glory shining <laughs> see when you're always laughing you cannot be depressed can somebody say amen say I will never be depressed ever again in my life in all the words this is what happens is when you're too busy dreaming about the future you don't have time to look back and get depressed it's too much sweetness in your life I say too much sweetness in your life can somebody say amen so what we're going to do, we're going to do two things. For those of you that are watching us, I want you to join in both. Where's Mr. Tyler? Come here. The one with the booing voice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come. So you're going to tell them where you know, they're going to sow the seeds. What we need is about, um, they, for the, the cameras and all those things, is just about 1200 bucks. We're done. Because I realized most of those places you buy the cameras one by one. If you're going to do it wireless, we like it wireless. And we don't want to put it in the iCloud because they will charge you monthly. We'd rather have our own hard drive that we can access it online too. I like to own the stuff. Let's own it. Can somebody say amen? amen. So that we can control what we do with it. That way they don't lock it up when, when they don't like you. Amen? That's what we want to do. So make sure we can take care of that, make an investment in it, and we're going to give the tithes and the offerings. Amen? Now, go ahead. Can you tell them what we're going to do? So uh, those of you that are in-house, uh, if you want to, the back of your chairs, there's an uh, option for you to pay by cash. You can fill out the information on the envelopes. Uh, for those of you that want to sew by um, credit card, our sister Christina here is in the front. And for those of you that are online, you can go to uh, Christlove.org. You can click the donate button. Uh, we have the um, PayPal option. It's the paypal.me forward slash uh, Charles and Defon. For those of you that want to go uh, through PayPal, it's the cash symbol, uh, Charles and Defon. And for those of you that want to use the Venmo option as well, we have that. Uh, it's the at symbol, Dr. Charles hyphen and Defon. 
And uh, we have, and also for those of you that are online that want to sew in by check, uh, you can write that out to uh, Christ Love Media, P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. Praise God. What I'm going to do is, I like to start kicking off things when it comes to investing in the house. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to let you guys take the lead now, and I do whatever it is it's necessary to get it done. I'm giving you an opportunity. Is that all right? So, come. A hundred past David. Yes. I want to make sure people can. So, I want to give everybody an opportunity. You know, Paul said, I know you have a generous spirit, but you lack opportunity. I want to give you opportunity to sow to soul towards that. I want to do that very quickly. That way, by Saturday, we have it up and running. I like to get things done quickly. Amen. So, you want to sow towards that. Make sure you get it done. Can I have a big amen? Now, um, what we do is this. Um, since it's Bible study, I want to give you an opportunity for one good question. Any question on any topic? Any question, any topic. If you're online also, we can look online and see who's asking a question. This is Bible study. We want to make sure it's effective. Amen? Okay, question. How do we slap the devil? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know that. What? <laughs> yeah. Questions. Somebody said to me, you, you guys are one of the few places where you allow people to actually ask questions. I said, of course. That means they're willing to learn. Question on any topic. If it's, if it's what um, Blake had taught tonight, if you want to ask him for clarity, we want to make sure everyone is clear about this. We do that very quickly. Okay? So that we can go ahead, Pastor David. Get the microphone. My question is uh, Deacon Blake, you mentioned patience. Thank you so much for the message, by the way. But you mentioned patience and how that can actually cause us to increase speed. And my question is when it feels like everything is moving really slowly, but there, there is speed, you can see it, but you have to wait. What does the role of hope come in? What, what can I do personally to increase my hope, see better into the future? I like that. You see, you worked in the airline industry, so you know that before takeoff, you just can't go down the wrong, the, the wrong way and just take off. You have to be patient until it picks up speed. So when it gets to the right speed, then the takeoff. Takeoff and landing are the most important part of flight. That's where uh, most issues happen. The actual flying and controlling and all those things, it's a lot easier. But a takeoff and landing, that's where you really, that's why they tell you to buckle up and all those things because it is that important. So it is necessary to be patient to make sure you are hitting the right speed. Does that make sense? So. You talked about patience when it seems like things are not moving as fast. But remember this, things are actually moving. The Bible says, through faith and patience, you inherit. It's not through faith. Faith and patience. Because most times I, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. You see, and some people go half-baked and the impact is less. So when we're talking about patience, we have a whole teaching on patience. Do you know, let's look at First Peter, actually Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature mm -hmm. having escaped escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust now the next verse verse five and beside this giving all diligence add to your faith virtue keep going and to virtue knowledge keep going and to knowledge temperance uh-huh and to temperance 
patience. Everybody say patience. patience. Now, watch the order of addition. God is a God of order. It says, let's go back and read it again. It said, to your and beside this, giving all, all diligence, diligence, add to your faith virtue. So, when you have faith, Add to faith. If you want to get the results, don't just have faith and run. Add virtue or power. Strength of character. Steadiness. Are you hearing me? And to virtue, right knowledge. Are you hearing me? It's giving you the formula of unlimited success. Knowledge and to knowledge what? Temperance. Everybody say temperance. temperance. Say temperance. temperance. That means being even killed. You're not moved by what happens around you. You're just calm regardless of the situation. Temperance. Things don't shake you. Because the Bible says you are not moved. Paul said none of those things moved me. Temperance, cool headed. That means you don't allow everything. Have you known some people? Every little thing just upset them. I'm so upset. I'm so. Like you're the only one upset in the whole world. The light went out. I'm so upset. The light comes on. I'm so upset. Okay, Mr. Upset. Yeah, clap on, clap off. We'll be upsetting you all day. Now, hear this. And to what? Temperance, what? Patience. You cannot have patience without temperance. Because if your head is not level, you can't be patient. Does that make sense? Because you're too in a hurry to go nowhere. And you cannot have temperance without knowledge. Watch this now. Because if I know the result of the situation, I am calm. Does that make sense? So when I have knowledge, I relax. I'm not moved. I'm, I'm temperate. I'm just calm. And because I know the result, I have the knowledge already, I'm temperate. Uh, I'm temperate. Next thing I do is, I'll be patient because I know the end result. Knowledge helps me into temperance and then temperance conditions me to be patient does that make sense and then to patience God likeness that means when you are operating in godliness or God likeness it means when God speaks it's finality You know it is done. And then to godliness, what? Let's keep going with that. Brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. And that's what Blake was saying. He said, he made a very succinct statement. It's not about you improving yourself. It's about you improving others. What are you doing to make somebody else's life better? That's the proof. It's not what you're doing to make your life better. Brotherly kindness. How do you handle your, your brethren? I you know a lot of people say they love God, but they hate people next to them. Quite interesting. Don't be deceived. The Bible says, if you don't love the people you, you see around you, how can you say you love God that you don't see? First John tells you that. Because God is in the person that you're hating. So brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, what? Charity. Everybody say charity. So you have brotherly kindness and then you have charity or love. And then hear what it says now. For if this things, plural, 
be in you and abound. They make you that you are neither barren nor unfruitful. There will be no barrenness in your life if you have this. You will always be fruitful. You are like a tree planted by the side of the waters. You are producing whenever people come to you. Can somebody say amen? But you have to know the formula. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? It says, you, be, you will not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me explain to you why knowledge is important. Your success in life is determined by what you know. what you know grow in grace and in knowledge grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ that God will give the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge first Peter said second Peter tells you that by these promises it's important to have an accurate knowledge because once you have accurate knowledge you hit your targets I will spend more time learning something to get it right I want to get it right the first time because if I get it right the fifth time what's gonna happen is I've wasted time and resources but some people say well you have to make some mistakes no you see when you have knowledge you reduce risk Only a fool hates knowledge. Smart people reduce their risk by gaining knowledge. The more knowledge you have of a thing, the less risky the thing is. So when you have full knowledge, you have no risk. That's when you can manipulate the thing to do whatever you want. That means you have now gained mastery. When you've gained mastery, means you have full knowledge. Does that make sense? You cannot say you've gained mastery and the thing controls you. You're the master of that thing. So you can say, I want it to move to here. So you can say to that mountain, be moved. You've gained mastery. Can I have a big amen? Does that, does that make sense to you? Now, let me put it this way. Knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. Once you have knowledge, confidence is easy. Confidence comes with competence. Once I know how to do stuff, I'm never afraid. I can just do it anytime. Am I right? The Bible says, run that you may obtain because everyone that goes there goes to get mastery you go to gain mastery that's what you go to gain question is what are you learning lately what have you learned today go back and listen to this message over and over and over take notes and then take notes on your notes and take notes on the notes you just took from your notes. Distill it. So that you can repeat what he said. Do you know why it was easy for me to remember things? This is how I remember things. When I study something. I summarize it. And then I read the summary and summarize the summary. And then summarize the summary and I can have it to four or five words. That's why I can take a piece of paper with one word and preach a whole message. Why? It is coded. Does that make sense? From that I can build a city. It's my seed. So I start from the forest. I know I need a seed. If I want to recreate the forest, I just start planting the seeds again. 
everything comes to you in the form of a seed. Does that make sense? Don't despise your small beginnings. Don't despise the little things you do. It will give you an advantage in life. You start today dreaming big. You said, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to make that phone call. I'm going to call that company. I'm going to do this. People will laugh at you. In a short time, that company will give you what you're looking for. Why? The Bible tells you. You have open spaces. Can I have a big amen? So patience is needed because you need the bible says you have need of patience i like what the bible says you have need it's telling you because remember patience god is working out all the kings on the side why is god telling you to be patient because he doesn't want you to get bloodied why are you going to go there and then start fighting the devil that is already defeated let the angels do their job so when angels are fighting, it's called the patience of the saints. That's, right, that's, right. that's what it says in Revelations. He said, what you see is called the patience of the saints. Angels are dispatched on your behalf to handle the business that you yourself would have handled. Does that make sense? That's why God is saying, don't go in first. Let the angels wipe out the enemy. So you walk in there and just gather the spoils. You need to have patience. Because they have to clear the landmines. You don't want to go there. You're royalty. You don't want to go there and have blown leg. Do you know why some, some believers get into problems? Lack of patience. Some great men of God died because they were not patient. I explained that because people say, oh, God took them. God didn't take them. God told them don't fly. But because they have an airplane, they want to show people their land. That was what happened to Kid Green. You know who Kid Green is, right? The musician? Yes. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. He wrote that song. And uh, he had some friends visiting his ranch. And so he told them, I want to show you the ranch. And he felt in the morning, the wife says this, that he felt in the morning he shouldn't fly that day. But because these people came, he would have just been patient. You don't have to show them. You just felt that you shouldn't fly patient because when you're patient God is calibrating your speed it seems like people are going ahead of you relax you're running a different race they're running just a short distance for two years you're running a marathon can somebody say amen you're playing the long game. So never compare yourself with others. So what seems like patience? You're doing nothing. No. You're doing a lot. What are you doing? It's your time of preparation. You're building a skyscraper, not a, not, not a tent. Patience. Build deep. Can I have a big amen? amen? So the problem is most people will live in a fast, fast food world. Am I correct? Everybody wants to be rich overnight. What you consider overnight success took years to build. There was nothing like overnight success. In business, they always say, build fast, crash fast. Build slowly, you crash slowly because you know how to handle any change. Are you with me? The reason why people want things fast is because the pressure is so hot right now. So I want to have a sweet life. No, build it right. Can I have a big amen? You know, everybody, oh no, everybody would like to be like a multi-billionaire like two years ago. Is this helping, helping you guys? So we're going to take care of that. I want to make sure we can take care of the um, security cameras. Yeah, I want you to make it specific, secure the camera. That way it has nothing to do with what we're doing in the house. Yeah, you can do that. Just mark it. You can do that on Cash App. Yeah. So we want to make sure everybody's participating, including those beautiful people that are watching us online. Amen. Have you been blessed? And Blake, I love you.
you're loaded. A dangerous man to the devil. And I see absolute restoration. This is going to be in, in, in weeks. Get ready. I think if people see you today, they better take a snapshot because change is coming so quick. Because things are about to heat in all, all sides. Amen. Let's all stand. So, we want to make sure all of you have shown something towards that. Now, does anybody here have a need? We want to make sure we can help anyone here that has a need. Who has a need here? Everybody's happy. That's how it's supposed to be. Can I have a big amen? The Bible says none lacked anything. I like a church like this. Raise your hands up to heaven. Take a moment begin to pray and ask God to enlarge your capacity to open your vision to see the open spaces in front of you sometimes it seems like a very simple thing but a lot of people don't understand that your words can link you to where you ought to go what can you believe God for what big thing do you have that you believe in God for I want you to speak it it's for that house believe for it it's for that land believe for it it's for that bill taken care of it's done begin to believe for big things for the contract to come in begin to believe for it it's for the car believe for it the Bible says ask anything see the thing is it's a blank check don't let religious people tell you you can ask God for this or that. You say, come to the place where you say, Lord, I just thank you because it's already mine. I thank you because it's already mine. You cannot let that pain last another night. Some of you have been going through some pain in your heart. Let it go. The pain can only last as long as you want it to. Lack can only last as long as you want it to. Say, Father, I thank you because you have given all things that pertain to life and to godliness to me through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And tonight, I have that knowledge. My eyes are open. I see the door that you open for me. I see the open space that is available to me. I take the bold step to walk that land. I believe tonight everything I see, as far as I can see, as big as I can dream, is mine. I thank you, Lord. It's already done. In Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands and say, Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Say, I dwell in His presence always. Amen. Hug somebody and I'll see you guys on Sunday. There's an overflow, abundance of faith. It's a new level, yeah. it's a new level, there's an overflow, abundance of increase, we're taking over, we're taking over, walking in abundance. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, we are favored. Oh, walking in abundance. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, we are favored. I am walking in abundance. We're moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. We are favored. I am walking in abundance. Oh, moving with the speed of Holy Ghost. 
I am favored, shaken over, I am taken over.